Hi, Rob Smythe here. Suppose you want to have um, an app where you have a chessboard and you put pieces on the board and you move them around and so on. What you'll need is an array of image views. This quickie shows how to set up the array and place a piece on the board and remove a piece. So for this demo, which is a very easy one, we'll go new project move this up here for you to see it single view next call this uh, demo I'm picking universal so this will work for both iPhone and iPad and I've created that so now we see the storyboards for iPhone and iPad but we're not going to use them and you see view controller H, not going to use that either, just going to use view controller M. Now I have the code for that stored in my Word file, so I'll just paste it in here. And uh, so you didn't have to wait for me to type it. So we'll just examine it. In the interface, put curly brackets and then define two arrays, grid cell uh, 65 and on top of cell 65. We're doing an 8 by 8 grid, which is 64, and I want to start my square counting from 1 up to 64. Uh, an array always includes uh, an index 0, so that's why we needed 65 here. Under the end of the interface, but on top of the implementation, define the variables we're going to use. We're using uh, cell width and cell height. I've defined them here as 57 because that's the height of uh, an icon, but um, it doesn't matter because we're going to set these heights uh, later um, in the app. 64 squares. Left X, that's the left margin. I got that set at 100, and the top Y is the Y margin. I got that set at 100, but that doesn't matter either because they're going to be set below. Now let's look at view did load. We're defining a counter variable, i, and two variables, row and call, for the row and the column. And we'll set them both zero to start with. Also, I'm going to use uh, an integer variable called first color. That's just going to be used to decide whether a row starts with a black or a red. We're going to build a checkerboard. Here, we see whether we're dealing with an iPhone or an iPad. So it says if the device is an iPhone, I'm going to make my cells 30 wide, make the cell height equal to the cell width, so it's a square, not a rectangle, and I set my top margin at the middle of the screen, which is 230 vertically, minus 4 times cell height. So that's the middle of the screen, back 4 cells. Similarly, the left margin will be 110, minus 4 times the cell width. Actually, that should be 160, shouldn't it? Because it's 320 wide. Okay, if it's an iPad, then our cells will be 57, and the top margin is set accordingly. Okay. Now we define our cells. We have the grid cells and the on top of cells to define. So we're counting from 1 to 64. We're going to define each one of these. Grid cell I, so starting with grid cell 1, that will be an image view with image named red square 57 times 57. That's just what I happen to call it. Notice that, that you don't go in it with image and then the name of the image. If you do that, you get away with it, but you get a warning saying, just a minute now, an image is not the same as a string. So what you actually do is you go in it with image, UI image, image named red square. So first color equals zero, I'm going to put a red square, otherwise I'll put a black square. Okay. On top of number one, then on top of two, on top of three, will be always the same, a white checker. But we're not going to see them because this next line says we'll hide them. Now we define the size of the frame, grid cell I frame equals a rectangle we're going to make and this says the left margin plus the cell width times a column 
So if we're on column zero, which I started with, our frame will start just at the left margin. Similarly, the frame will start at top y. I got top y plus cell height times row, and I'm starting with row zero. And they're going to be cell width, cell height, wide. Same code for on top of cell. These two lines add them to the page. This would be like if we went to the storyboard and put them on um, ourselves, but you have to put all 64 in one by one and link them all up. So this does it programmatically. Now, having put on the first one, we increase the column, switch the color. This shows how to switch between a 1 and a 0. If first color was 1 before, we'd go 1 minus 1 and get a 0. If the first color is 0 before, we get 1 minus 0 to a 1. This one line is equivalent to saying, if first color equals 0, then first color equals 1, else first color equals 0. So you can just do it all in one expression. At the end of a row, column will have exceeded 7 because it started at 0. So the row number kicks up by 1. First color switches again, and we go back to zero. This caused me a little bit of trouble. When I was first doing this, I, f I didn't think of switching first color twice. But if you think about it, at the end of a row, you've got to switch the color twice because you go black, red, black, red, black, red, black, red. So you switch the color first, we go to black, but the next row starts at red. So you've got to unswitch it, right, or switch it a second time will enable user interaction and multiple touches for the grid cells. Here is the touches routine. If the touches began, then we define the word touch, this is the variable name, for whatever's touched. Define the, the integer for my counter if i equals 1 to square, so for each square, see if touch on the view is one of the grid cells. If so, we'll do this. If the if the on top of cell, which is the player piece, is hidden, we'll show it. Otherwise we hide it. And that's all the coding we have. The last thing we need to do is copy the um, pictures in. So here are my three pictures and they were the black square, the red square, and the white checker. So ready to run. Here we go. I'm running on the iPad simulator and there it is. So if I touch, I place a marker and if I touch again, it's gone. I'll stop that, switch to iPhone, and run again. And did I do it? Oh, there it is. Took a little while coming up. I hadn't had it on previously. So we'll touch here, touch there, touch again, and it's gone. So we have successfully created a grid of 64 squares with images in them and shown how you can put other images that respond to touches on and off. What you really have to do, of course, if you were going to set it up for checkers, is you'll want to be able to touch this and move it, not just turn it off. So my next one will deal with moving. I'm not an expert in Xcode programming, and I seem to forget things as so, almost as soon as I learn them. So it helps me to remember them if I get to try and tell them to you. So thanks for listening.